In this chapter, we will learn how to create and modify UBW maps in ZBrush for our Amulet base mesh. Okay, now what I want us to do is create some UBW maps for this mesh because later uh, we're going to need to use these so that we can create the crest symbol that you see here. We're going to do that based off of some masks and that type of stuff. Um, and what I want to do first is I'm just going to quickly save this in case we have a crash. Uh, if you guys are following along with the uh, purchase tutorial, I've already got some folders uh, structure set up for you here. So I'm just going to end up saving into the ZBrush file section. I'll just call this uh, Amulet A. Otherwise, I recommend you guys make your own folders and save frequently because sometimes we'll be doing things that could cause this to crash. So as you remember, we have the nice topology now. Uh, what I want us to do is, um, well, basically, I'm just going to show you how to make UV maps in ZBrush. So I'm going to minimize this transform section. I'm going to come over here to Z plugin and drag that over to the side. Under here, UV master, we're going to be using this. So what I want to show you guys just by default is what happens whenever we just unwrap using the uh, current default symmetry that's set. So I'm just going to click that. And uh, let's take a look. We're going to go ahead and flatten these UVs. By the way, I just paused the recording. This took about 30 seconds to unwrap. That's why uh, it's really quick for me. So let's hit flatten. What you'll see now is this is basically, for those of you that are you know used to using UVW mapping in production environment, this is your UV template. And you can see here how the UV masking is uh, relaxed. So it's actually doing a pretty good job. The problem is, is we get a lot of distortion around the edges, things like that. So what I want us to do is actually make some poly groups and cut all the pieces out just like we would for a production environment. So let's click on unflatten to get back to the original mesh. And what we're going to start doing is we're going to just be masking off different sections so that we can make poly groups. And then we are going to be unwrapping and creating UVs based on poly groups. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to press X to turn off symmetry. And I'm going to go to our side view here. By the way, uh, most of you probably know this, but if not, any time that you're kind of dragging around the keyboard, just press shift on the keyboard, and that'll help you snap to an orthographic view, etc. So I'm going to snap to this view, and then I'm going to change our mask back to the mask pen, which is probably what you guys have on default. And I'm going to just mask out this front section that you see here. I'm going to press Control w on the keyboard, and then shift f so we can see the different poly group. And um, I'm basically going to kind of do this for each section, left, top, this little corner chunk here, the back, we're going to make different poly groups for every single one of them. And each time I make a poly group, I'm going to end up hiding it. So I'm going to do control shift, click, click, and now we have this poly group hidden. So shift F, so we don't need to see this. I'm going to control drag, and basically, again, just control W, and control shift, click that to hide that. And then now I'm just going to mask out each of these sections, like the top, Control w hide that, and so on and so on. And I'll probably speed up the video real quick uh, so that you don't have to hear me repeating this over and over. Okay. Uh, so now if we press Control shift or sorry, Shift-F, you should see somewhat different colored polygroups for each section of this. So now we're going to click on this section over here, Polygroups, underneath UV Master. I'm going to keep Symmetry on, and let's do Unwrap again. This time up here, you'll see a process. It should go fairly quickly now that we've made uh, UV groups. Yep, it's going pretty fast. Previously, it was... 30 seconds, but it's processing more efficiently because we did these um, cuts with our poly groups. All right, so it's done. Let's flatten that. And now you can see we have these really nicely flattened, uh, laid out UVW maps. It even did a really good job of taking the side pieces that we did. Just imagine if you wanted to, um, you know, have like a really straight line going on uh, with a UVW mapping, it's nice to have all of these in one angle. Uh, and in fact, a lot of people don't know, but you can come through here and you can actually rotate and move things within this. I'll just show you guys really quick. Um, let's just mask a section here. For example, I'll mask this. I'm going to invert the mask selection. And then I'm going to press W on my keyboard so that we can kind of move this around. Okay, 
By uh, control shift clicking, you can just click on different polygroups, and what it does is automatically, when you're in mask mode, it will keep the other portions masked. So for example here, let's say you want to rotate this, all you got to do is come in here, and then you can move that. And then, uh, you know, you can get some really nicely laid out UVs that you'd be able to use in production. So I'm just going to move that, control shift click this other one, let's rotate that, and we will move that over here. So if you were doing, you know, um, texturing, things like that, this would be a really good UV setup. The thing is, is I want to be able to maximize the UV space just for the crest symbol that we have under here. So basically what I'm going to create right now, and you just got to follow along with me and trust me, is I'm going to create kind of what I'm going to call throw away UVW maps. So I'm going to control shift click one of these islands and control shift uh, or click control click here on the side to invert this. I'm going to take this group over here. I'm just going to make them really, really small, move them off to the side. Because right now, for the purposes of what we're going to do sculpting later, we don't need these big. Later, we'll come and finesse these again. Uh, but for these purposes, I just want this really small. So I'm going to control click here uh, so that we have this highlighted again. Uh, up here, if you come to the section, see it says go to unmask center. Let's click that. That way we can kind of get it centered on this selection. And let's center that as much as possible as we can here. Like this is the center line here, and this is the center line. So I'm going to kind of put that right smack dab in the middle, and then let's scale that up. And what we're making sure is we don't want the uh, topology to go past the UVW coordinate section here, the uh, blue section. So just frame it here perfectly. Let's invert our selection. And we're going to move the other polys over here so they're in the inside too. So now we have a nicely centered piece which is going to work well later for whenever we start sculpting based off some images that we're going to create in Photoshop. And let's go ahead and unflatten that. So now we have these nice UVs. Um, I'll keep this as just a separate chapter because I think it'll be useful for you guys to come back when you just want to focus on the UVs. This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores, which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush, I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final Keyshot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.